I am sorry about our technical delay here. We're starting a little, a couple minutes late, but very glad to have our guests, Mr. Zimbroff, high school teacher in Hello. Tampa, Ms. Gain, a middle school teacher, Hi. and Mrs. Lutz, a third grade elementary teacher. Um, all of these teachers are here with us this evening representing themselves, not representing a district or a school in particular. Um, and we thank them for being here to share their insights, their suggestions, and their experiences of e-learning so that hopefully we can all make it through this home stretch uh, with a little kick left in our steps. All right. Um, I know we had a couple questions um, come in from people, some specific things that people were looking to have addressed and discuss tonight. Um, so we'll hopefully touch on all of those, but if anyone does have questions during this, feel free to post those and we'll do our best to answer questions as they come in. Um, but we do wanna start with talking about um, what the parent role looks like during e-learning. Um, this is maybe one of the bigger struggles that people have faced. It's not something any of us as parents expected to be doing at this point. Um, even those of us who are teachers, it's very different having your own children um, to work with. We know that our own children often behave better with other adults and listen a little bit better, possibly with other adults. Um, at least maybe as a parent, I hope they do. <laughs> Um, so my question for the teachers is, how do you see the parent role in e-learning? Um, I know a lot of people talk about it being you know, homeschooling, but we do still have our teachers. And so it would be helpful, I think, for us to hear from you about what that parent role looks like in terms of managing, um, checking in on grades, assignments, how much do we sit and hold hands, and I assume this is going to be different at the different grade levels. Um, so Mrs. Lutz, we'll start with elementary and then we'll work up through middle school and high school. Thank you. Well, I think that at the very beginning, of course, kids needed help starting with teams is what we use. and. I found it really helpful for parents to set up like a routine and a checklist for kids because they need to know what comes next and what they still need to do. So that was really helpful from parents that were doing that. Now they're a lot more independent. And if I, I send out a PowerPoint and they are told what to do for each schedule, and they should be able to do it at this point in time. However, I still feel my role is to check in with them. I don't have this. I don't have that. Are you done with this? But, and then sometimes I ask the parents to check in. Mm -hmm. Different parents feel different needs on how to help. I sometimes see parents sitting next to them. Mm -hmm. And if that's what a child needs, that's okay for me. If the parent wants to hear what I have to say, that's okay for me. But at this point, in third grade, I feel like they're pretty independent to do most of the things we're doing because I'm just continuing the schedule of what I did in school. So That's I have pretty much well motivated kids because mm -hmm. they're third graders and they want to see their friends and their teacher. That's great. How about middle school? What does the role of the parent look like for middle school so, students? Yeah, at the middle school, um, yeah. you really have a lot of different levels of being able to do things yourself and, and being able to organize yourself and being able to lay out the work for yourself. So some of the kids are really doing well with that and some students are struggling with that. So if your child is struggling with laying out and, and organizing themselves, um, being able to maybe make a plan for them or a schedule like Mrs. Lutz had, had mentioned, um, that would be helpful. Um, mm -hmm. You don't necessarily, you don't need to be the person teaching them. Like I'm a math teacher. You don't need to be the person teaching them the math. That's me. I'm, I'm going to do that. Um, and if they're struggling with it, let me know, have your child email, you know, the teacher and the teacher is going to help them through, through the problems. So um, don't feel like you need to be teaching the content to mm -hmm. your child. Um, be there to support them organizationally and in reaching out maybe to the teacher if they need some help. Great. What about the high school? What do parents' roles look like for high school students? Uh, I'd say they're uh, similar to the middle school and even a little bit less um, intensive on a daily 
basis. Mm -hmm. uh, we want high school students to really show a lot of agency in what they do, mm -hmm. or at least begin to show agency and have that control of their own daily schedule and have control of their learning to the point that they don't need constant reminders. So I contact the parents once a week uh, to make sure that they're knowing what's going on in this you know, new environment. Um, I only do it maybe once a unit during the regular school year. So this is more that I'm contacting parents. But basically what I'm asking them to do is monitor their students and engage with them as they would as if school was mm -hmm. already you know, in session normally. Uh, I teach social studies, so the kids usually go home with things to talk about most days of the week. So I've asked the parents to continue to do that at a minimum and also make sure that the kids are um, following through on their work. Mm -hmm. by checking the homework on the grading page and that sort of thing, which is pretty standard procedure for high school parents anyway. So um, daily engagement isn't necessary, but if it is on the topics that we're talking about at the time, it's great. Great. All right. I know another um, topic that a lot of people had questions about was the issue of motivation, um, especially as the year is winding down, perhaps, and the weather is getting nicer. There are some struggles with students who, you know, feel that they don't have to do the work. Their grade is fine. Their grade's not going to go down. Um, some of the, you know, some kids are worried about showing up and being the only kid there for a, um, a live session with the teacher or one of only two kids and they don't want to be put on the spot. Um, what would you say about, you know, that big motivation question as well as um, just showing up for those live sessions? Well, in the elementary, obviously, 100% of my kids want to be there. They want to see their friends. This is their opportunity. We chat at the time when we start all our meetings, and I meet with them every day. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't have very many unmotivated kids. And if I do, they're pretty good at when I say I'm missing this or I need this from you. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to please their teacher. So I'm in a I'm in a good spot for that. I think. Mm -hmm. How about middle school? Um, middle school, I think it really varies depending on the subject um, as to how much meeting is going on. Um, I know mm -hmm. for me, it's more review sessions that I'm doing, and sometimes only one or two kids show up, and that actually mm -hmm. turns it into a great review session because I'm able to really engage with them a little bit more and provide almost a little bit more one-on-one -on -one tutoring, which is um, nice. So even if it is just one person there, I mean, you can mm -hmm. really get some great review uh, with the teacher. So, you know, I definitely would still encourage it. Um, I know it's awkward sometimes, <laughs> but, you know, especially as the kids get older, they feel a little bit more awkward when they're the only one with the teacher, but um, it, it helps. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And how about in high school? Are you seeing any struggles with motivation? Any suggestions for parents get them through? Uh, my students personally, no, not really. I've got mm -hmm. over 90% of them participating on a, a, you know, adequate level each week, if not a daily basis, they're doing what they need to do each week. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't mean that there aren't high school students who have fallen into that trap. Um, because of the state school board's mandate that grades cannot be diminished this year, there are some students who are taking advantage advantage of that. And that's a reality. Um, but we're trying to use intrinsic motivation and the lure of, you know, meeting online with friends and um, talking about the important topics that we talk about in class to keep them motivated beyond just what, you know, it might mean for their grade. And it's been pretty successful so far. Um, the few students I've had to go after a little bit to make sure that they're staying engaged, once they get that email from me individually, uh, or the message via remind individually, they usually get back to me within 12 hours and have taken care of what I've asked them to do. So it's been pretty good so far. I've been really impressed with the students in this uh, environment. If we have to continue this in the fall, I think we'll see even greater engagement because I think the framework will change. Okay, and we do have um, more questions about that coming up as well. Um, another question I had for all of you was, what resources have you come across during this time that you hope everybody knows about? Um, I know some of my favorites that I've come across were Mo Willems teaching drawing lessons, Lin-Manuel Miranda giving U.S. history talk, and um, John Krasinski's uh, Some Good News with the virtual prom and virtual graduation. Um, so I know there have been a lot of fabulous things out there, and I'm wondering if you guys have come across um, resources that you think that families would benefit from knowing about. 
Yeah, in the elementary, I've, I've stuck to pretty basic, but I've used Jarrett Lerner. Um, dot com and he is an illustrator and an author nerdy books mm -hmm. and he has put out a lot of comics and um, thank the postal worker thank the healthcare provider that I send to kids mm -hmm. that they're able to do so that's been pretty cool um, I know there's been a couple other different resources for teachers but Khan Academy and using our happy numbers that Mm -hmm. continues to meet kids wherever they are. So I guess my resources, my resources aren't so, aren't so new. Mm -hmm. Flipgrid, a lot of the elementary uses Flipgrid because the video is very um, user friendly and the kids mm -hmm. use that a lot in lower grades and we used it for our biographies this year. Fun. Yeah. So, from, mm -hmm. How about so I don't middle school? School. Go ahead, middle school. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know that I have a lot either. I definitely I use Flipgrid as well. Um, that's a fun one. And it's the kids can add so many fun effects to it too, which is really kind of cool. They have fun with that. Um, as an educator, I use Socrative, which is a nice way for me to have students enter answers. And I'm able to then see how they're doing with those, you know, with those types of problems. And it gives me really immediate feedback with how they're doing. Um, kids love Kahoot. Um, and that's something that as a family, you could just set up and mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to necessarily be an educator to do that one. So the kids love that. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I do videos through Edpuzzle. Um, mm -hmm. so that I'm able to see that students are watching videos. So those are the main ones I've been using. Those are all great resources. And we did do a family Kahoot night. <laughs> yeah, we did too. <laughs> Trivia. Yeah. How about for high school? Any fabulous resources um, for us? We've been really lucky at the high school that over the last few years, we've really integrated a lot of um, either learning management systems or programs of that nature. So the teachers can be very specific about how they want to teach their classes for their content and for the learning skills that they want their kids to use. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I use OneNote a lot, mm -hmm. uh, whereas other teachers use Schoology and some use Google and all of those, the school is supporting very highly. Uh, and we appreciate that. Uh, for me, uh, specific tools for this, um, Crash Course is a, a series of uh, review lessons, kind of like Khan Academy, that's really useful for social studies, uh, especially U.S. history. They have a really wonderful series of about 45 videos that do quick little uh, updates of uh, or reviews of topics, and they do them at a level that is um, useful for regular AP, any of the classes that I teach. Um, a lot of my other tools I've been using are really kind of social studies specific, like Bill of Rights Institute, um, mm -hmm. sites that have been established by like the National Council for the Social Studies, mm -hmm. uh, the National Council for History and Education are the ones that I use. Um, some universities that I've attended have, have stepped up with stuff where they put things together. So I've given kids links to some of those things as well. That, and they've had them over the course of the year too. So none mm -hmm. of it's really new at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably having a, a LMS, a learning management system that works for you and your classroom set up ahead of time makes the rest of this really a lot more smooth so I can deliver the information, not in person, but via video or some other joint activity. And then the rest of it kind of flows like it has for the rest of the year, which is nice. That's great. It is really hard to imagine going through all of this even five years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the technology that we have these days is, is incredible. All right. Another. I have to tell you, Martha, that our district did a great job, though, of pulling, coming forward, and doing PD with us because mm -hmm. that was my biggest stress: was how am I going to get this out to our kids? So mm -hmm. I do have to say that that they did that very, very well and have been very helpful and in, in, in that regard. So that's that's allowed us to be able to find resources and get them out to parents and kids. So. Yeah, at the high school, we have some curriculum coaches and the administrators themselves have all been incredibly helpful throughout all of this. So uh, nothing but high marks for everybody. Definitely takes a team. Mm -hmm. All right. Another big question looming summer. Um, obviously, we all know about the summer slide, you know, when kids are off for three months and they lose a little bit of what they had before. Now they've been out of school, even though they're attending school, um, maybe not as intensively. They also will not have the benefit a lot of a lot of the summer camps um, and some kids, you know, normally attend academic camps and, you know, enrichment during the summer. So what ideas or suggestions do you all have for families that are looking towards the summer and 
thinking um, about what they can do, what options they're going to have, what they can offer their kids over the summer to better prepare them for the school year to come. You know, in the elementary, I think um, book clubs are a great idea because reading, reading, reading the whole time is a good thing. And to keep those relationships that they've built and they're going to be able to keep their computers over the summer. So, you know, calling on their friends in some way to talk about books would be a great idea. Math facts, continuing up with those. Um, you can play all sorts of games with math facts. I uh, think it might be nice if the teachers would let them know maybe some things that they missed, like we didn't get very far in our geometry unit or our data unit. So if parents know that, they can kind of pull up some things from commoncoresheets.com or just do, you know, a little bit of school here and there. You mm -hmm. don't have to do it. You don't have to do it a lot. But I think your basic, what you always have to keep in mind is your reading and your math and, and mm -hmm. keep it going, you know. I love the idea of a book club. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I have my own, but. <laughs> right. As, as do we probably all. Yeah. <laughs> How about for middle schoolers? Any ideas? Um, you know, there's always things online that you can do. It's very easy to search something. Um, Mrs. Lutz mentioned Khan, Khan Academy. Um, they definitely have things that are very aligned to the standards. So if you um, are able to find out kind of what your student, what your child didn't get to, what their class wasn't able to get to because of this, um, you could certainly, you know, look up standards there. Um, there's all sorts of fun places to go on the online that you can practice a lot of different things or learn different things but you don't always want to be online either and i was like thinking about this and i'm like yeah reading write a journal um right. those things are great um i know i was out on a walk with my husband who's a science teacher and um he has an app on his phone that lets you uh identify plants so if you're out on a walk mm -hmm. you know get that app and look up what names of plants are, you know, just things, have your child help you figure out the tip when you get something delivered to your house, you know, incorporate some of those real life things that your child can learn. Write letters. Cooking. Yeah. They can learn some math from cooking for us, right? Right. And, and yeah. then we need more walks. <laughs> <laughs> we have a system though, so it's hard math. <laughs> <laughs> I've been learning a lot more about birds, local birds during this time. So that's been fun. How about for high schoolers? Do you have any suggestions for yeah, them? Yeah, definitely the high school level gamify things if you can. And it doesn't mean computer games necessarily. I mean, find the Monopoly board, play mm -hmm. that with your kids, make them do the math. Um, a lot of, there are a lot of um, str strategy games that involve mm -hmm. history in many ways. So you can find ways to keep their brains working the way we want them to work without them really thinking that they're learning. Um, echoing the, the book club, find books you can read together or maybe, you know, make, again, make a game out of that so you can finish it first, so you can, you know, get to a certain point in the book first. Um, talk to them, I think is probably the best answer <laughs> that we can really give is engage with your kids on an intellectual level for at least a little while every day, and that'll get them through the summer. I see a question popped up here about what, what are gonna happen to kids who've fallen into a bit of a funk. Um, kids are resilient, kids bounce back pretty quickly. And I think once um, we do get back to some form of regular school, most of them will resume how they were in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, and any catch up that needs to be done will probably be done by the teachers and the, the, the help it, within the building to make sure that the kids get to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but I would still definitely try to keep them engaged through mm -hmm. the bulk of the summer. Yeah, my kids in, in class do genius hour, where they're just using mm -hmm. inquiry. And so to me, they can certainly continue that throughout the summer because you can try to find out more things and do presentations with your family or just tell somebody about it. So I think that would be a cool thing to do too because it's just like taking walks, learning about the birds, playing board games. I mean, all these things that they can come up with what they're interested in. Is Words with Friends still out there somewhere? Words yeah. with Friends? Okay. Yeah. Sure. I think uh, Mayor Pete just admitted that he Great. plays Words yeah. with Friends. <laughs> like modern travel. <laughs> Great. Pull out the travel board, <laughs> play with friends, yep. keep them engaged. It's out there for sure. All right. Another question we have moving forward in time. What does the future possible future of e-learning look like? I know we've heard whispers about potential e-learning at the beginning of next year or at some point. 
next year. And all of this obviously depends on what happens in terms of numbers and infection rates and cures and possible vaccinations, which we all hope come sooner rather than later. But realistically, you know, it's looking like it's possible. Um, what changes do you see um, if we do go back into a period of e-learning next year? Do you think anything will be different, the same? And even if we don't, do you think that this time of e-learning has changed education in any significant way or the, what, what that might look like for our kids? Elementary wise, I think the kids have loved being home with their families. That's been an advantage of this, a positive point. Um, they miss their friends. I think schools are being told to do, you know, plan A, B, and C because nobody knows what's going to happen. I think they've realized um, how much the computer is helping them be connected. But the problem with me is like second graders don't have the same usage on the computer. They haven't learned. And so there's so much we teach them at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. that that's the scary part to come in, to be expected to use things and, and not know how to do it. So that's a big learning curve. Mm -hmm. If that's the case for the beginning of the year, I'm, I'm hoping that that's not the case, but if it is, you know, we'll figure out how to deal with it. That's mm -hmm. what teachers do. They adapt. All right. Yeah. And before we move on to middle school, we did have a question pop up. Um, somebody asked for more of an explanation of Genius oh. Hour. Okay. Uh, Genius Hour is basically asking an inquiry question about what you want to learn. And it's not just one answer to that question. And so they go out and search for answers. They can there's all sorts of different ways you can do it. You can search um, and teach someone how to play something. You can teach somebody how to cook or or knit or, or draw something. You can um, teach about, I've had kids do posters on turtles and things like that. I've got, um, a lot of the kids have learned how to make PowerPoints through Genius Hour. And so they add their information to a PowerPoint and then they present to the class. So they are doing that, and it's it's based on um, an hour a, an hour a week. And it was originally was it I'm trying to think if it was um, Apple or was it Google that or, Google that, is that I mean, what it was? I think Google had all their employees spend an hour a week or right, or a day or and something. they had to work on something for the company that would mm -hmm. make it better. But it was an interest of them. I do it, whatever they're interested in. And they love it because it's they're learning what they want to come up with. So that's what Genius so Hour is. Just kind of taking their own natural curiosity and, right. and putting it to work for a, right. that amount of time. Right, right. Mm -hmm. All right. So back to the possible future e-learning or the impact that this e-learning has had for middle school. Yeah, I would say at the middle school, a big thing for the kids is they do miss their friends. I think they have probably more connections on social media than the elementary kids do. So, but um, yeah, they they really miss connecting. And I mean, I've had kids come to review sessions and we review and then we just talk afterwards and mm -hmm. they just need that. Um, and I would agree with the, the beginning of the year, if it, it's the technology set up, there's so much set up and training that we do um, at the beginning of the year with the technology. So, um, but like Mrs. Ledge said, we'll, we'll adapt, we'll figure it out. Uh, we'll make it work. <laughs> whatever, teachers, whatever. Teachers are especially great at that. <laughs> yeah. How about for the high school? At the high school? Yeah, it's, um, this year we've had the advantage of already knowing the kids before going into the e-learning environment. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those personal relationships were very well established by this point in the year. So it's added a lot of tools to our toolbox on how we can teach the kids. What I'm really curious to see is how we're going to be able to, if we have to, establish those relationships digitally uh, in the fall. And that'll be very difficult for a lot of us because we're very good in person and we don't know if we're gonna be that good through a camera. Um, and hopefully we'll be at a point through the epidemic here where we can at least be in the building some of the time mm -hmm. and be face to face with the kids some of the time, even if it's not a full daily schedule like we're used to. Um, if we're still out 
then we're going to have to come up with new ways to engage and new ways to connect that um, create those relationships that are really the foundation of our teaching. And then once that happens and once we're able to do that comfortably, I think the rest of it will flow more slowly than it normally does, but it will flow and it will work. So I'm not too concerned. I think it really has helped a lot of the kids become much more able to function uh, on their own. Mm -hmm. and be able to solve problems a little more quickly than they may have been able to in the past. And those that are struggling, we're going to have to find supports for them. And maybe that's more one-on-one -on -one time towards the end of the day or something like that. But we'll have to come up with solutions. And I believe we will as needed. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. I don't see any more questions right now. I know that it is Teacher Appreciation Week, and I know that all of you and all the teachers out there would much rather be in classes enjoying your students during Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, so I'm sorry that that's not the case this year, but I know you know, myself and every other parent out there is incredibly grateful for all of the things that you're doing for our kids right now and keeping them together and keeping some sense of normal for them during this time. And lots of love for all of our teachers out there. So thank you all once again for joining us and hopefully everybody got something that um, will help them get through these last weeks. Thanks, we really appreciate our parents part. too. Really we do. do. Yes, the parents have been incredible. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, Martha, for hosting. Thank you. Take care. You take too. care, everybody. Stay safe.